A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. We are going to do hard exams solving today, hard exam sol solvation, solving hard exams today yet again. And this time it's in um, linear algebra exercise, all right? I'm having a matrix here and we're going to deal with matrices today. Even though the exercise really doesn't look like any matrix whatsoever, but it is what it is. Um, I'm having the exam here, link to the exam will be in the description, link to the video where this exam came from will also be in the description. And at first we have to draw this matrix A for n being equal to 6, 6 by 6 matrix. Also one really important thing is that n is an even number. All right, for example, the dimension could be, since it's out of n, okay, um, so m is out of n, couldn't be equal to zero, so the degree of n is at least two, two, four, six, etc. And we need to draw it for n being equal to six. Other than that, the entries of the matrix are one for i plus j being equal to n plus one, and the entries of a are equal to zero if, well, it's not equal to n plus one, so the sum. Let us draw this thing. So this exercise in itself is, is pretty ingenious because um, it's, it's kind of going the whole thing backwards, but it also basically gives you um, all the information you need with the six by six matrix. If you know how this thing is drawn, how, how this thing is structured, you already know everything about the exercise. It's pretty amazing. I give it to Professor Ull for um, providing us with such a great exercise on this exam. It was a lot of fun. I love working through this thing. Let us dive right in, Matt. So, um, six by six matrix. So, A is thus. Okay, it looks kind of complicated, all right? But let us go through everything. I plus j must be equal to n plus 1. n plus 1 in our case is going to be 7. Now take us, uh, let us take a look at the entries. So that would be a11, a12, a13, a14, a15. Okay, up until here the sum of those is going to be 6 and then a16. Sum of those is going to be 7. Meaning this last entry is going to be one and all the other ones are going to be zero, blah, blah, blah. So we have a lot of entries here. We have five other entries overall. Not going to write everything out after that. Now we can continue from here. Okay, A to one, A to two, etc. Up until A to five. A to five, two plus five is seven. A to five is exactly here, spot number five. And then we have A to six, wait, Wait, 8 to 6? Well, this is going to be 8. Then we put a 0 here. Maybe you might see a pattern, okay? We are going to go 6 down here, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All the other entries are going to be 0. And all the matrices of this kind here are going to look like this. What we basically have is 1s or R1s on the not main diagonal, okay? And all the other places are just there with a lot of zero. So, so if you really want to sketch it, you are going to put zeros everywhere and then you already have your first points for this exercise. Maybe one or two out of 12 points. That's amazing. Next up, Professor uh, wanted us to, um, let me see, I believe he wanted us to find out the rank of A so some random arbitrary A plus the identity matrix and then the rank of A minus the identity matrix. He wanted us to show that the rank is N over two indeed. N over two does work just because, well, N is an even number. So any A that we are going to have is going to look like this, all right? We are going to have a one, 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 and all the other places are zero. This is what A looks like. Now what is A plus the identity matrix? A plus the identity in n dimensions is going to be, well, it's, it's just like a cross matrix, all right? So we have ones on the main diagonals and, and ones on the not main diagonals. Here's one thing that you need to take into account. We have an even dimension, meaning overall, in the middle here, we are going to meet with a block of ones, basically. Four ones in a little block. So 
1 plus the identity matrix is going to be this 1, 1. Then we are going to have 1, 1, 1, 1. 1, little 1, and little 1, and 1. Okay, all the other places are going to be 0, not going to write the zeros into here. Okay, this is our notation for now. Now, what is the rank of this thing exactly? And this is where you can just make use of the Gauss-Jordan algorithm in this case, okay, so just the Gauss algorithm, meaning we are just going to make row reduction. And you might notice something, row number one is the same as row number n, row number two is the same as row number n minus one, and so on, up and in the middle. So what we are going to do is we are going to take row number n in this case, and we are going to subtract row number one from it, okay, just this row minus this one. Then we are going to take row number n minus one and subtract it from row number two and so on. We are going to do this n over two times overall, leaving us in the process with a matrix that looks like this. Meaning n over two places, we got rid of those, okay? Those were n over two rows and n over two rows are still left. And those n over two rows are obviously linearly independent. I mean, you can manipulate any of those rows here such that you can get rid of the middlemost one, for example. Meaning overall, after doing the Gauss-Jordan algorithm, this should be the right word here, I think that should be the right algorithm. So, so after doing a lot of row reductions, n over two times, that's actually still um, not like a hand wavy way. Using this algorithm is actually a rigorous way basically, you are going to arrive at the rank, so the number of linearly independent rows of n over 2. Okay, so the rank of A plus the identity matrix in n dimensions is going to be n over 2. Now we are going to do the same thing with the negative ones. Okay, A minus the identity matrix. Let us see what this is. Minus the identity matrix means on the main diagonal, we are just going to have negative signs here overall. So negative one, negative one, and here we are just going to have ones, okay, all the time. Now, you might notice something. If we were to just add row number one to row number n, one and negative one is going to be zero, and one negative one is going to be zero. Meaning overall, we are going to, instead of subtract them, we are going to add them together this time. Meaning we are just going to get rid of all those entries down here. And by the same argumentation as before, n over two rows, we got rid of those, and n over two rows are still left linearly independent. Meaning this is the same as the rank, of A minus the identity matrix in n dimensions. And then we are done with this exercise. That was really easy, right? Using this algorithm. Um, I think you can make it even more rigorous by defining yourself some, some column vectors, for example, tra transpose column vectors, and then you should also be good by uh, ma manipulating those. But there's already a way you can make use of. Next up, oh, we are close to being done. We need to show that A has eigenvalues positive and negative one and that A is diagonalizable over Q. And lastly, we want to calculate the characteristic polynomial. This is what I'm going to do first because it makes everything easier, all right? If you know the characteristic polynomial, you also know the algebraic multiplicity of your eigenvalues and then you know about all the eigenvalues, blah, 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 and then you can talk about the diagonalizability. What a stupid word, but I have to practice it because this Friday there's going to be another hard exam, a linear algebra one, where a lot of people failed, okay? So don't miss out on that. Now, char characteristic polynomial of A. Well, characteristic polynomial of A is nothing but where the determinant of A minus the eigenvalues times the identity matrix in n dimensions, okay? And we want to set this equal to zero. Now what does A minus lambda times the identity matrix look like? Well, just looks like what we had here, but with lambdas instead of negative ones, all right? So this gives us um, negative lambda, negative lambda. Then we are going to have uh, negative lambda. There's a one here, one, one. Let me draw everything nicely, negative lambda negative lambda, one. Now this looks like a real mess, but actually it reduces really nicely yet again. We're going to do, uh, yeah, just row reduction yet again here in the determinant. This is something that you can actually do yet again. At first, let us add 
the last row to the first row. So 1 plus n. Then we are going to add the n minus 1 row to the second row. So 2 plus n minus 1 and so on. We are going to do this n over 2 times overall, leaving us with the determinant of. Well, if we just add those two together, we are going to get 1 minus lambda, 1 minus lambda, here in the middle, 1 minus lambda, and then, well, negative lambda plus 1 is going to be 1 minus lambda, 1 minus lambda, 1 minus lambda. Then here, Nothing is going to change down here, okay? We are not manipulating those, so negative uh, 1 and a negative lambda up until 1, negative lambda. That's a lot of writing here. But the cool thing is, we have n over 2 factors, common factors of 1 minus lambda here at, at our hands. Let us factor those out and let's see what we are going to get. I'm going to put it here, that's, that's quite a mess. So, if you bring a factor out of the determinant, then you have to um, take it to the power of how often you, you have it here in those rows. On n over 2 rows, we have 1 minus lambda as a common factor. So 1 minus lambda to the n over 2 power. n over 2 power. And then we are going to have, okay, we tracked out the factor. So this makes 1, 1. And then we have 1, 1, 1, 1. And nothing changed here. 1 minus lambda until 1 and then negative lambda. All right, now we came this far and I'm going to write down on the next blackboard what we are going to do next. Basically, we are going to take the last row and we are going to subtract the first row from it. Then 1 and negative 1 is going to cancel out to be 0. And what we have down here is negative lambda minus 1. So this is lambda plus 1 with a negative sign in front. And we are going to do this on all of those um, n over 2 rows that we have down here, such that we get a common factor on all of those. Okay, all the entries here are zero, except for the last one with negative 1 plus lambda, dragging this to the outside, and then we are basically done. <laughs> Dada is bugger. Bugger this! Oh, Onishan! Bugger this! Like I said just now, written some stuff here on the blackboard, all right? So what are we going to do? So we are going to take row number n and we are going to subtract row number 1 from it. We are going to take row number n minus 1 and we are going to subtract row number 2 from it. Doing this process n over 2 times is going to give us 0 on the not main diagonals. Also, um, Zero here, all right, like, like this, like this. Also, what we are going to have is negative one plus lambda. And then up until down here, negative one plus lambda. Meaning overall, we have negative one plus lambda as a common factor here, right? We are going to bring it to the outside. So this is one minus lambda to the n over two. And then we are going to have negative. Um, yeah, we are going to have the negative um, do we have, yeah, we have this n over 2 times, going to put it like this, negative 1 plus lambda to the n over 2. But the most important thing here is that our char characteristic polynomial needs to be equal to 0. Okay. Negative 1 to the n over 2 power is never equal to 0, never ever, all right? So we can just cancel it on both sides, okay? This is now the most important thing here that we are going to deal with. Now, this polynomial can only go to zero if we have eigenvalues one or negative one. Now, those two are linearly independent, but not the n over two times of one minus lambda, for example. They are not linearly independent, meaning the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue one is going to be n over two this way. So um, let me write it out, algebraic multiplicity of Lambda being equal to 1 um, is n over 2. And the same thing, this is lambda 1 being equal to 1, the algebraic multiplicity of lambda 2 being equal to negative 1 is exactly n over 2 yet again. So what we have found out is that on the one hand we have eigenvalues 1 and negative 1. We have found out what the characteristic polynomial is. Now the only thing left to do is to show that our 
um, matrix that we are having here A for some random arbitrary uh, n by n matrix format is going to be diagonalizable and this is extremely easy. Like I said before Professor oh, gave us this, this exercise in a completely wrong order basically okay to just let us work backwards but if you would have started with the characteristic polynomial calculation and just move forward then you would have just arrived at the same thing all right but this makes it even easier because this time if we were to find out the eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenspace for example we want to find out what a minus lambda 1 times the identity matrix times some vector is equal to the uh, homogeneous solution basically this is the eigenspace it's it's the kernel basically here okay kernel sanderson now what is a minus lambda one times the identity matrix well since lambda one is just one this thing here is exactly equal to a minus the identity matrix in n dimensions now thing is rank of a minus the identity matrix in n dimensions is going to be n over 2 and the rank of this homogeneous system is actually just the dimension of the eigenspace. It's absolutely crazy, it's so fantastic. This little exercise with the rank, okay, what we had at the beginning is actually meaningful since, well, what can you say? The rank of this thing is just the dimension of the eigenspace. Okay, just is what it is, just, just try it out, um, just try to solve this system of equations and then everything is going to reduce if you just do row um, manipulation in there. It's, it's just absolutely fantastic. I don't even know what to say because it's just so cool. So the dimension of the eigenspace is actually n over 2 for the eigenvalue lambda 1 and the dimension of the eigenspace tells you the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue as well it's, it's n over 2 algebraic and geometric multiplicity of those two are equal meaning it's diagonalizable for the first eigenvalue that we are going to have here what about the second eigenvalue well just make out of the negative a positive because um, lambda 2 is nothing but negative lambda 1 all right, giving us A plus the identity matrix. We know that the rank is also what, uh, uh, n over two, meaning the dimension of the eigenspace corresponding to the second eigenvalue is n over two. Geometric and algebraic multiplicity are equal. And then we are done for far. By God, we are done, all right? Now for Frick's sake, we are just done, by God. And yeah, this concludes the exercise and it's absolutely amazing, in my opinion. And I just love this and thanks to Professor oh, for providing us with this great exercise during an ag exam, exam. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, recommend the channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more by the teachers that I created or support the channel on Patreon, check out the second channel. We can pretty fun this one. People love when they sing these days. I really can't sing. I'm so bad at singing. I'm into the next video. Have a flammable day. See ya. Ciao. Whatsoever. Grüße euch. Glück auf. Macht's gut. Ich liebe euch. Tschüss.